In the great state of Tennessee, the 5th congressional district uh, is right here in the central part of the state. Fun fact about the 5th district is that it's the only district in the whole state that doesn't share a border with another state. It's basically the landlocked Tennessee congressional district. And it turns out there's a whole bunch of little tidbits about that district that um, are of interest to people who live there. There's enough of them that you could sort of make up a whole game show about it if you wanted to. A local radio station in Nashville has done just, done just that. It's called Taking the Fifth, and the, uh, the game show goes a little bit like this. Here we go. What three interstate highways are located in the 5th Congressional District? Oh, I w I d I'm a terrible driver. I don't know that. I don't drive anywhere oh, that I go. Okay, it's I-65, I-40, and I-24. I don't drive anywhere that I go. It's all hang gliding? I don't know. Uh, you know, if you don't like driving, though, that might be a tricky question. The interstates thing, maybe? Um, the thing you need to know about this, this trivia game show, though, about the 5th Congressional District in Tennessee is that they don't invite just random people from the district to play this game. This radio station specifically invites people to play this game if they are running for Congress to represent this district. Uh, that clip we just played was, in fact, a Republican candidate who was running in the Republican tri primary to try to fill an open congressional seat in the Tennessee 5th. So she goes on this local radio show to show her would-be constituents how, you know, how she deserves to be their representative, how one she is with the, the people of the 5th District. And her first question, that one about the, the three interstates in the district, that didn't go well. Uh, yeah, that was just the first question, though. Plenty of time for redemption. A country music superstar, a famous multi-Grammy award-winning performer, has a popular winery in the center of the 5th District in Arrington, Tennessee. I have been to that winery. Oh, okay. Then you... Yes, it's great. I love that winery. I bought, a, I bought like a... Who owns some... it? Who owns it? Oh, you got this, though, right? You've been to the winery. You bought some of their wine. I bought some wine. Okay. So you... You've got this one. You've been there. Right? This one, Alicia's going to get this one, right? It has to answer the question, though. It's great. I love that winery. I bought, a, I bought like, a, some it? wine. I don't know who owns it, but I love it. We went there for the summer and had a picnic outside. It was beautiful. Kix Brooks. No, oh, he's, a, he's a Tennessean. Who owns the winery? Oh, 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 who owns it? No idea. Absolutely no idea. Here's another one. Uh, this is about that big, giant car dealership in your district. Right in the center of the district. It's huge. You can't miss it. Everybody who lives there knows that one. One of the most famous NASCAR drivers living today lives in the 5th District, has a large auto dealership in Franklin. Who is that? You know, my husband is the car guy. He, he knows all of, He used to race. He knows all of the... All of the racing stuff. Daryl Waltrip. Okay, this is a Tennessee one. Okay. <laughs> I think they all are From Tennessee ones. this month. <laughs> She's realizing in real time how bad this is going. Oh, um, I think these are all Tennessee questions, Patrick. <laughs> so this is going very poorly for me. Um, but there's, there's one more. This is the last one from the, the very end of the game. Rather well-known Confederate general one whose name and history have been a source of enormous controversy in Tennessee the last few years, was born and raised in the community of Chapel Hill in the 5th District. Who was he? I don't know. Nathan Bedford Forrest. What mm -hmm. county is Cha Chapel Hill in? I don't know. Marshall okay. County. It's in your district. My <laughs> so that did not go well for that candidate. Um, her name is Morgan Ortegas. And, you know, it's a remarkable thing to see this just kind of a disillusion, right? A candidate for public office not being able to name the counties in her district. Uh, but it's another thing entirely when that candidate was handpicked to run for that seat by the de facto head of the Republican Party. Uh, Morgan Ortegas used to work in the Trump administration. She's been personally endorsed for that seat by Donald Trump. He was in such a rush to endorse her, he actually did so before she'd had the chance to officially announce she was running for it. This is a race that's incredibly important to Republicans. It's a seat currently held by a Democrat who's retiring, so the Republicans have a reasonable chance to pick it up. It's a crowded field. There's like a dozen Republicans running in the primary. You would think that being handpicked by the former president, that would be like a golden ticket to the top of the field, except Morgan Ortegas has no idea what she's doing, right? She's not from Tennessee. She only moved to the state last year. 
perhaps evidenced by that disastrous local radio appearance. She doesn't even live in the district she is running to represent. And so this has set up an interesting thing, because this is not actually just a story about her. It's a story about Donald Trump and his influence in the Republican Party, because the surprise twist in this story is that Republicans in the Tennessee legislature decided that Trump endorsement or not, they were not going to have her as the Republican candidate for that seat. The Republican-led Tennessee legislature decided to pass a bill that requires anybody running for Congress in Tennessee to have lived in their district for at least three years before they run. That seemed squarely aimed at booting Morgan Ortegas off the ticket for that seat. Then arose another problem. The Tennessee Secretary of State said that new bill wouldn't actually apply to Ms. Ortegas because it was passed after the filing deadline. <laughs> But then Republicans in the Tennessee legislature decided they were going to kick her out of the race anyway. They instead just voted to remove her name off the ballot. Donald Trump's hand-picked candidate, they just took her off the ballot, full stop. Now, it, it's unclear whether it's going to actually work and whether Morgan Ortegas might challenge her removal from the ballot in court. But either way, this is a this is a twist, right? This is an interesting and surprising time in Republican politics right now. I mean, Trump not getting his way in the Republican Party, particularly in the South, that's news. Him getting popped in the nose by the Republican Party like this, this is definitely news.